So this video is all about selecting using the GIMP and there's lots of different tools for selecting. Uh, I'm going to assume that you already know why you want to select. It could be for photoshopping or a bunch of other reasons. So let's get started. Here we go. There's the oval select tool. I'm going to select my head in this picture. I'm not going to do a great job on this. This is just supposed to roughly select an area. That's all I want to do here. Uh, I can hold down the shift button with the elliptical select tool and you see a little plus sign as I'm dragging. And so what that does is it adds on to the selection, which is really handy. And I can manipulate that selection as well, too. Okay, I'll hit enter once again. I could also, uh, with that selected, I could click on the rectangle select tool and I could hold the, uh, the control button and a little minus sign comes up. And if I hit enter, I can actually uh, take away from that selection. If I were to do something like control C, for example, copy and then control V, I have this floating selection, this floating layer. Click the plus sign down here, creates a new layer out of it, and there we go. We've selected and floated uh, uh, my head for the most part. Now that's not a very good selection, but the idea is just to show that you can use or how to use the elliptical and the rectangle select. Let's go on to the next picture, and we're going to use the scissors, the intelligent scissors select. And I'm going to zoom in a bit. What I want to do is isolate the flag here. And so we'll go to the intelligent scissors here. And all I'm going to do is just start clicking, and you'll see that if I click right on the edge, it should detect the difference in contrast between those colors. And you can see it's not going to do a perfect job. That's okay. As long as it's reasonably good. Click Enter. Oh, we got to close it first. Hit the Control button to close. Hit Enter, and we've got our selection. Okay, and you can see there's a little bit of a flaw down here, but really that's not all that bad. And again, we could float that or do whatever else we want with it. Okay, on to the next one. For this one, what I'm going to do is um, use the magic wand. And so the magic wand is here, and this will select areas of similar color. And again, you could experiment with anti-aliasing and also feather edges. And so let's just start working on this. Actually, what I'm going to do first, Control-Shift-A, I'm going to duplicate that layer. Okay, and now I'm going to hold down the Shift button. And I'm going to select multiple. I can add on to that by holding down that shift button. And uh, that looks pretty good. I'm going to hide this layer. I'm going to go on the top layer. I've got that selected. I'm going to go layer, transparency, add alpha channel, and hit control X. And we've gotten rid of a fair bit of it. This part's a bit messy. Uh, but what I could do is actually select the rectangle tool, hold the shift key, and add to that selection. And now if I hit Control X, it's all gone. There we go. This isn't perfect. I, this needs a lot of work to really clean this up. Uh, but if I were to, for example, this is kind of silly, but move it into this, uh, into this image. Whoops, let's try that again. Drag that and drop it here. Uh, you can see that it really did quite a bad job because we've got some background to kind of hold it up against. But you know what? Not bad for, for less than a minute. Okay, on this next image, what we're going to use is select by color. So we'll go select by color, and I'm going to pick kind of a mid-range color. And again, we can, like the other ones, we can set the threshold. So let me just deselect and increase a threshold. I haven't really talked about that. It works the same with all of the select tools so far. So now it's going to select much more because I increased the threshold. Okay, um, and I can click by holding the shift button. I can add multiple uh, selections, click in different areas, and if I go transparency, or sorry, layer, transparency, add alpha channel, hit control X, you can see, and then control shift A, you can see we've actually done a pretty good job of removing that background in, in just, you know, one minute. Now, it did help, of course, that that background was very uniform in color. And I did forget, normally I like to duplicate a layer first, just so I've got one preserved layer to work with. On to the next one, I'm going to use a free select tool or lasso tool. And let's just see, I'm just going to draw like this, kind of a side, uh, side view hourglass. And there we go. Uh, let's try that again. I'm going to go a little faster this time. Oopsie. And hit enter. Ah, there we go. Now I got what I wanted. I just had to draw over top of it. And now I could invert that selection. And if I have the, the edges feathered, now I can apply some filters. I might want to desaturate this and kind of draw uh, the viewer's eye into the middle here. So I could go uh, colors, hue saturation, and just drop the saturation right down. And it should just impact that outside. 
And if I've done this right, I'll click OK, Control Shift A. It's nicely blended, um, and that is because uh, we had used the feather edges on this. Whoops, that was the wrong tool. There it is, the lasso tool. And again, you could I, we could have adjusted the radius of that uh, feathered edge. Okay, out of the next one. And for this one, what we're going to do is use the Paths tool. The Paths tool is, uh, at least in my uh, toolbox, is right here. And this is nice. If I click, there's no intelligence on this, but these are straight lines. So this is an obvious place to use the Paths tool. And click here, control click there, hit enter, and we've got our selection. And uh, if I were to go transparency, uh, or sorry, layer transparency, add alpha channel, and hit control X, that's gone. Okay. Or I could invert that selection, hit control X, and everything else is gone. Control shift A to deselect, and I've got that thing isolated. It's very easy. The other really neat thing about this is if I click in the paths dialog here, Okay, so let's say I click away and I, I, I think, oh, you know what, I would have liked to have had that selection back. I, I'm not quite sure why I would need that, but there, there have been times. Uh, all you need to do is, with that path selected, click down here, and this is path to selection, and you get that selection back. So I'm going to hit Control-Shift-A and do one more demonstration here uh, using the, uh, uh, the path tool. So I'll click on it one more time, and I'm going to take the Carney logo here. And this is kind of cool because I can actually use the Bezier uh, curves here to really, really kind of get this thing uh, nicely set along the, the curves. <laughs> I messed that up a little bit. But you can go back and we can actually tweak these things. And look at that. We should be able to get this fairly close to fit that curve. That's good enough. I'll hit enter. And, uh, and then I could apply some kind of filter. I could brighten this up, for example, adjust the color on this brightness contrast. I'll just crank it up just so you can see that, uh, that that's, that's, uh, that's offset from the rest of the, uh, the area that I previous, previously selected. I'll click OK, OK on that and zoom out. If I hit Control Shift A, I can go back to that original selection if I wanted to. Or I could select the first one click Path to Selection and I've got it selected. That can be really handy. Paths, path Tool is great. All right, I think that's everything for now. Oh, uh, there's also foreground select tool, and I uh, created another video just to show that, and that's a very powerful tool. It is right here. No, it's not. <laughs> it is right here, the foreground select tool. Uh, awesome, awesome tool, uh, and link in the video description below to that video if you're interested. That's it. Over and out.